ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Oh, we came home, we heard the news, definitely weren't happy about it. A sexually violent predator moving in next door, but tonight some neighbors in Rancho Bernardo are saying not on their watch. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Kimberly Hunt. We appreciate your time tonight. And a San Diego Superior Court judge is ordering the conditional release of Douglas Badger into a home in that area. ABC 10 News reporter Ryan Hill spoke with neighbors about their reaction to the startling news. The California Department of State Hospitals is recommending that Badger be placed at this home. Some neighbors worry about what this will mean for their tight knit community with lots of families and kids. It's a very knit like come together community. Everyone knows each other very well. We have holiday parties, all kind. Of, we have everybody's emails list, contact, all of that. For Ndasso Drive in Rancho Bernardo, neighbors will say it's a great community, but on Wednesday they got some unexpected news about a possible new neighbor, sexually violent predator Douglas Badger. You want to give a person the benefit of the doubt, but with the different diagnoses that he's had and um, time and things, you know, it definitely makes you nervous. The San Diego County Sheriff's Department announcing that the County Superior Court is ordering the conditional release of Badger. And the Department of State Hospitals is recommending this home on Forndasso for him to be moved to. This just can't happen. You know, it's too close to young families and schools. The Sheriff's Department says that the picking of this home is the responsibility of the state hospitals and the court. I asked the court how and why the Forndasso home was chosen. It referred me to state hospitals. State hospital says there are plenty of steps in finding a home to be recommended for a conditional release. There's reviewing of previous housing searches, that it's within legal distancing requirements, seeing if it's in a neighborhood with kids, how old they are, and other factors that will impact a judge's decision before they order someone to be released there. Earlier this year, the Mount Helix community fought back against Badger moving into their community. It led to a judge ruling against Badger being moved there. This Rancho Bernardo neighborhood hopes they can do that too. My hope is that this community will do the same and that they will go to the public hearing and we will have our voice heard. I think there'll be a lot of outrage. We're doing our best to get this message out and not let this happen here. San Diego County Sheriff's Department says that it will be taking public comments for this proposed placement in the formal response to the court and the state hospitals department. It will be taking those comments starting next Thursday through October 14th. Ryan Hill, ABC 10 News. The public hearing for Badger's release is scheduled for Friday, October 29th at the San Diego Superior Courthouse. And turning now to our weather, today felt like a true battle of the seasons. It may be the first day of fall, but summer temperatures were not letting up here in San Diego County. It was too much for one hiker who was overcome by the heat in the Blue Sky Ranch area near Barono. Rescuers came out. They had to fly that person to Sharp Hospital. There is no word on that person's condition tonight. So the heat was felt all across the county and our meteorologist Leah Pizzetti joins us now with a look at those conditions tonight. It was hot all day long. Oh yeah, and really most of the county felt those hot conditions. You certainly did. Uh, we actually read some broke some records. Hello, we tied uh, for Campo 101 degrees. That's what we hit today. Tied the record uh, for this date that was previously set. If you remember, we also either broke or tied records yesterday as well in Alpine and Ramona 98 degrees and 101 there. Vista also yesterday, so record breaking heat the past couple of days. We had a heat advisory that just expired at 8 p.m. Uh, that is over now and temperatures will be cooling down, but even our overnight lows. These are our current temperatures right now. Uh, they're fairly warm. We have a lot of 70s on the map still. Fallbrook, Escondido, Poway, Kearney Mesa, El Cajon, National City, Chula Vista, all in the 70s still. Uh, likely not too much more cooling that we're going to do into tonight. So uh, a warm night tonight, but cooler temperatures on the horizon. That's right. A cool down is coming. I'm tracking that coming up. There was heartbreak for a South Bay family mourning the loss of their loved one, the victim of a murder suicide in Oklahoma. Our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo spoke to family members and they tell us a young woman had strong ties to her community. Her family tells me she graduated from East Lake High here in 2017. She was active in the color guard and even helped coach after she left the school. She loved family parties, pretty much any party. <laughs> 
She always brought the life to the party. She was the life of the party with a bright smile and a deep love for her family. 22 year old Trisha Fernandez. All the kids always used to jump up and down like, yeah, she's here, you know, like we can have Auntie Trisha here. On Monday, her life was cut short. It had been two days since anyone had heard from her. So her manager in Oklahoma reached out to her brother in Eastlake. She was missing for a, a couple days. Um, she had missed work and it wasn't like her. Fernandez grew up in Eastlake, had dreams of joining the Air Force and moved to Oklahoma City almost two years ago, where her family says her boyfriend was stationed, active duty in the military. Dell City police responded to a welfare check Monday and found Fernandez and her boyfriend, 23-year-old Aaron Butler, dead. Police say it appears Butler shot her and then turned the gun on himself. They weren't always on the best of terms, but it was never something that I thought they couldn't, you know, get over or work out. The family is now raising money to help bring Fernandez home for the funeral services, choosing to remember her as the loving sister, daughter and cousin they could always count on, hoping her story helps others remember to always check in on loved ones or to ask for help. If there's something wrong, say something you know it could be small or if there's someone you haven't reached out to in a long time and you want to check to see how they're doing do so because she did that for people the family does have a gofundme page to help bring trisha home you can find that on our website 10news.com in east lake laura Acevedo, abc 10 news the trial is now underway for the man accused of a deadly shooting inside a South Bay restaurant. The judge asked us not to show the face of Albert Blake. He is accused of shooting three employees at the church's chicken in Otay Mesa West in 2019. One died. The prosecution says Blake was angry because the workers wouldn't let him use a counterfeit $100 bill. And detectives say Blake's car had gunpowder residue on the steering wheel and had more counterfeit money inside. They say the same car was spotted at the restaurant. I'm not a car guy, but I know what a Dodge Charger looks like and different types of other cars. And to me, doing the comparison, it appeared to be a Dodge Charger. The defense is trying to create reasonable doubt. They say it's not proven that Blake's car was the same as the video. They also allege witnesses gave different descriptions of the gunman. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria plans to announce a ban on ghost guns tomorrow morning. The city council voted last week to make buying, selling, or having the untraceable guns illegal in San Diego. Mayor Gloria's signature will make it official immediately. A violation of this law will be a misdemeanor. It does not apply to guns that are antique, made before 1968, or no longer work. Every little bit counts. And that's what's important here, is that we are trying to move off of our dependence on oil in all ways. And new tonight, Encinitas goes electric. Just over an hour ago, city council members voted to ban natural gas hookups in new developments and some renovations. Appliances such as stoves and water heaters will require electric hookups during construction. It's an effort to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to fight climate change. The rule applies to homes and businesses with some restaurants eligible for an exception. It's the transportation sector, it's the electricity sector, it's consumer choice. All of those things we need to transition away from our dependence on fossil fuels. Encinitas is the first city in San Diego County to ban new gas hookups. There is a record backup of cargo ships stuck waiting to unload at Southern California's ports. You are looking at more than 100 ships. They're all stuck waiting outside the port of Long Beach. Imports are rising quickly as the economy rebounds, but there are more goods arriving than there is capacity to unload them. And because of those shipping problems, you can expect prices to go up on lots of popular products. That includes toys and Christmas trees, both the real trees and the artificial ones. Holiday shopping experts strongly recommend you do your shopping early. There isn't a lot of inventory, so if you, the longer you wait, the more of a premium you're going to pay on not just shipping, but also the price of those items. Some big box stores, they're trying new solutions. Target, Walmart, Home Depot, they're now starting to charter their own cargo ships that can unload at smaller ports that aren't backlogged.
And tonight, Texas has in place what the governor calls a steel barrier of vehicles, sending a message to Haitian migrants. The Biden administration is facing major backlash as mass deportations take place and thousands are being removed from the border or denied entry. The Biden administration must immediately and indefinitely halt all deportations of Haitian migrants. And some Border Patrol agents were seen on horses using whips to keep the Haitian migrants from entering Texas this week. They have now been placed on administrative duties and they will have no contact with migrants while an investigation takes place. And as for more Afghan refugees fleeing to America from Taliban rule, major companies are looking to hire extra translators. More than 40 languages are spoken in Afghanistan, and even the writing system is different there. Amazon, UPS, and Facebook, they're just some of the companies struggling to find enough translators. Some of those translators already here are working 12 to 15 hour days to help refugees operate in the U.S. More than 5,000 are expected to settle here in California. One refugee who's found success here in the United States shared her positively San Diego story with others today. Ari Anarvar, her journey began when her mother handed a poem to an ambassador as her family tried to flee Iran in the 1980s. That poem moved the ambassador so much that gave the family visas to India. Now Ari is using her family's legacy through her writing to inspire other refugees and immigrants. It's uh, a story about the yearning, that omnipresent yearning for freedom from suffering. A Girl Called Rumi is the name of the book. Ari held a book signing for the book's release here in San Diego today.